you're building the other is a uh, online program. Uh, so you want to be able to bring people back to the school. When we bring people back to the school, I have a couple things in the toolbox. I got a couple things that are going to be able to help me and be allies in uh, bringing people back and making sure that they get the education that, uh, that they need. Uh, number one is uh, we have amazing faculty here. Um, some of the best in their fields in the country. Uh, right here in North Carolina, right here at, uh, at the school. Uh, true professionals, veterans. Uh, we've had some technical issues in the past that we were able to uh, uh, skip through or, or um, move through. And uh, they were always professional, always gave a great show. So um, I thank them. Uh, secondly, of course, we have superior staff here, whether it be program managers, whether it be the uh, support desk, uh, well, service desk, and IT, whether it be apps, or uh, my team, which is at NCAT, we do an amazing job of making sure that clients and faculty alike have uh, amazing service. Um, next, we have uh, Zoom. So we have, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Next, we have the 18 hybrid classrooms and offices. So these classrooms and offices have a number of things they can do from uh, Skype to Zoom to um, a screencast, you name it. There are different things that we have created to do. Uh, next, we have um, <clears throat> the uh, licenses. So we have our Zoom licenses uh, for webinar and for meeting. And then last, we have a media site uh, license for classroom captures. So when we bring people back into the building, there's a couple things we need to look at, a couple factors that we need to consider in bringing people to the building. The number one factor is client willingness. Will clients be willing to come to the building? Uh, will their managers let them go? Will, uh, will travel be uh, allowed in uh, different areas of the state? We don't know. The uh, second uh, large factor we need to take a look at is state regulations. Um, does the state require how many seats we can have filled in each room, uh, in the building, and for how long? A uh, third thing we need to look at is the uh, affected care leads. I would assume that uh, as the number of seats in here go up, it is due to the number of cases of affected care leads going down and of uh, course vice versa. Our goal is to be back at 100% uh, capacity in the building as well as to improve on our online uh, footprint. So uh, we would do that mostly through uh, Zoom. And so I asked you, uh, what is Zoom? And again, you probably already know the answer to the first part of the question. So with, I believe, uh, they're currently at 400 million subscribers. Uh, Zoom is the uh, largest video conferencing uh, application. Um, it uh, works on almost every platform, which is the reason why it's so well uh, used. Um, here at UNC, we, uh, you used to have Sakai with Sakai, no, I'm sorry, we used to have Blackboard. And then with Blackboard, we had Blackboard Collaborate, we moved to Sakai, but we kept Blackboard Collaborate. And then in August of 2018, we switched over to uh, Zoom. At that point in time, every student, faculty member, and staff member that has an email address got a professional license uh, to Zoom, which is important. The third thing uh, we have here is uh, Zoom rooms. So we are currently in a Zoom room where you can see in our classrooms, we have the screens up. We also have the cameras, um, microphones, and things that sort of. Um, and that's kind of what I want to focus on today is our main solution in trying to make sure that we can get uh, uh, the clients what they need as far as uh, their educational needs here at the school. So let me tell you a story, a little timeline, how we got to where we are today. Uh, I was in one of our classrooms downstairs. When I was in that classroom, uh, Michael Ballmer, uh, who is my boss's boss, came in. And uh, I was uh, trying to figure out a solution to have one laptop hook up to one of our, uh, one of our monitors in the room wirelessly. And it was a little doodad and all. I had a uh, HDMI went in, let me the USB for power. You, you guys know what it is. Uh, um, he came in and he says, Jamar, that's fine, that's nice, I see what you're doing, but can we do this? And so he pulls up his phone and he has a picture 
that looks a lot like that first picture you see. And he says, I want our building to be able to do that. Uh, he didn't know what it was called, he didn't know the name of it, but he just had a picture on his phone. He says, that's so why I say, oh, well, what does it do? He says, well, you go in the room, you see this on the screen, it's got um, a calendar of what is going on in that room. Sometimes it has a QR code, you can click on it, and then uh, you can download an app um, if you're on your phone or laptop. If, uh, and then it just uh, shows your screen uh, right onto the projector. And you don't have any wires or, or anything. The whole thing runs through the uh, wireless infrastructure in the building. I said, okay, great. That sounds expensive, but um, I'm going to give it a try. So I went out and tried to find uh, basically what this was, and I was able to find the uh, company that, uh, uh, that actually uses uh, what you see on the screen, uh, as well as all the other uh, companies that were leading in this field. And, uh, I saw Zoom rooms listed. I said, you know what? We already have Zoom licenses for everyone in the building, as well as on campus. So this, if we use this solution, it's half the battle. So um, I approached uh, my boss about it and uh, said, hey, uh, Maurice, this is what I'm looking at doing. Can we, can we get in there? He says, well, I'll get back to you. So um, while he was waiting to get back to me, I uh, started looking at what we would need in order to make this happen, how much hardware we would need to uh, purchase licenses, so on and so forth. Uh, while I was doing that, I was taking an inventory of what we had already in the building. Um, which was a uh, hodgepodge of, of a bunch of different technologies. So depending on what room you were in, you had Crestron, some rooms, Extron, other rooms, had uh, Chrome deals. I don't know if you guys remember when Chrome had like a, um, a conferencing uh, tool. Uh, but we had the whole gambit here in the building. And depending on which room you were in, you brought different connections or some of them you know, most of them actually had dedicated laptops to them. So you would have to bring a flash drive all around or you'd have to try to get into the network and some machines were on, some machines weren't. Uh, it was very difficult for anybody to just come into a room and get the ground running, uh, which is what you see on the uh, second picture. So then we go to the third picture, which is uh, all nice and neat. The new furniture was not a part of the uh, piece that I did, but uh, it does look good. It's great furniture in there. Um, Alicia Matthews, great job. But um, what we were able to do is place monitors in every room. Uh, along with those monitors, we were able to put the uh, PCs up, uh, connect those PCs to uh, camcorders, uh, cameras, or uh, webcams, uh, depending on which room you're in, um, speakers. But the main thing we were able to do is uh, allow people to come in with their own device. And when they reach the room, they can have confidence knowing that the way the room they were in yesterday worked is the same way the room they're, they're in today is going to work. Uh, we streamlined the entire process. We streamlined the entire um, solution so that people can have the uh, comfortability of coming into a room and knowing that uh, it's going to work and they have that confidence that they'll be able to use the technology um, in the room. So uh, I do want to show you like a little connectivity diagram in case you were wondering how Zoom rooms works. Really quickly, uh, you first have to have a computer. Um, you can use an Apple machine if you want to, or you can use a uh, Windows PC. We are currently using the Intel Nuts. Um, and like I said, there's one here behind this uh, left screen. Second thing you would have to have at least one monitor to it, for it to connect to. You need to have at least one camera. If there is not a camera attached, it will stop you right there. The uh, application doesn't work with that. And then you also have to have a microphone, you have a speaker, and then you have a uh, controller. We currently use an iPad, which sits right here. Um, there's one in every Zoom room. Uh, they all attach to the cloud. And then the cloud, of course, we have uh, online storage that we move things from the cloud to uh, Vimeo so that they can be viewed and we don't uh, bog down the cloud. <laughs> and this is how they connect. Uh, this here is uh, how the interface looks on the screen when you come up to it. Uh, it's, it's really easy, really simple. You can just choose the meet now and bam, 
the meeting, it gives you a random ID. Uh, as you can see, the little Rolodex piece on the right hand side uh, basically has all of the room numbers that have Zooms in them. You can click on one, choose to meet now. It rings in that room, kind of like a phone. Um, lower on the list, there are also people here in the building. So if they are active, you can click on them and uh, start a Zoom call uh, uh, that way as well. Uh, the next thing you have off to the left side um, on the menu is join. So if there is a menu, if there is a meeting ID that you already have, you can press that button, type the meeting ID, and uh, run it that way. You can also do presentations in the room. So if you click on this button, you are able to connect the device that you have and you'll screen share in that particular room. Uh, the last item listed is a Zoom phone, which is something else we also have. So now we're able to get rid of the polycom that we have in the room. And the Zoom rooms also act as a polycom. Once you press the meet now button, you'll get this screen. This screen is actually what's on the iPad currently. Uh, the buttons are exactly what you think they are. What you see on the screen is exactly what they do. So you can view video, you can uh, screen share. Once you press that button, you can actually uh, type in the meeting ID or you can type in the share key to your laptop or whatever device you have. It'll stream right up. Uh, you also have uh, ways that you can view your content. You can switch cameras if there are multiple cameras in the room, uh, camera control. Then you have your managed participants, which is the same one that you guys have in the interface at home. Uh, you're able to invite people directly from the iPad. So you would uh, click invite. You can uh, find people who are on that Rolodex again, or you can type in an email address. Uh, you can start a recording. Uh, everything from the uh, room records into the cloud. So once you press that button, it'll ask for your email address. You type in your email address. Uh, it'll start to record. Once your meeting is over, around 30 minutes later, you actually receive an email saying, here's your recording. It gives you a link. Uh, the next piece is a uh, chat function. So the chat function works just like the uh, function chat at home. But one of the neat things about it, so if you're teaching a class, and you have people in the building, but it's hybrid class, so there are people also remote. The people remote can uh, choose the chat. And you're actually able to see the chat here on the screen. So it becomes a more immersive experience. So uh, the people that are in the room, everyone doesn't have to have a laptop in front of them. They're able to see what the people at home are writing and texting. And you can also have them on the screen in the uh, whole Hollywood Squares Brady Bunch action. Uh, one screen you can have for the people, the other one you can have for the content. So it becomes a more immersive experience. So everybody gets the same experience. The next thing we have is the schedules. The schedules are on the outside of the, uh, the room. And we have them on the outside of the room on each uh, room we have. Uh, it basically gives you uh, what's on the calendar. It does pull from the uh, exchange calendar. Uh, if your room that you're in is available, it'll show green down here at the bottom, and you can choose to reserve it right there on the fly. If there's somebody in the room or the room is in use, then it'll show red down here but you can also choose to reserve another room. You would press the uh, button right there. After you press the button, you would come to the screen that looks like this, where you can choose to name your meeting. You can add participants directly from here, choose what time that you want to uh, reserve the room for. If you're the room that you're at is currently in use, there's another option that pops up in the corner that says find a room. And at that point in time, you can see, uh, it'll pull up the room number of every room that has a Zoom room, if it's red, that means it's in use. If it's green, that means you can reserve it. You can click on it and reserve it. That room, no matter where it is in the building, from the room that you're at, which is uh, pretty slick. So uh, here in the building, we have uh, uh, four types of uh, classrooms that we would need to try to bring uh, people in when the quarantine lifts. Uh, the first room that we have here is uh, small and medium-sized rooms. Uh, these rooms hold about 30 people, roughly. You can probably squeeze in 40 in a pinch. However, uh, with social distancing, that would be impossible. Uh, we're probably only going to be able to get five to 10 people uh, in the beginning. Uh, the issue with having, uh, well, we could choose to keep everyone remote. But the problem with keeping everyone remote is everyone doesn't learn the same. Some people, you can give them a book. They'll take a look at the book, read it, come back to you, know everything they, they need to know, no problem. Other people, they can get online. 
and they can listen to the instruction online and they can follow along with the slides, come back, have everything you know, no problem. But then there are others. There are other people that they need to have their butts in the seat. They need face-to-face, -face, one on one, peer-to-peer -peer instruction. And that is the only way that they're truly going to learn. So for those people that absolutely have to learn that way, we want to be able to have a couple seats in the building for them. And as time goes on and it becomes safer to have more in the building, of course, we would definitely want to do that. Again, our goal is to be at 100 percent capacity. But until then, we want to get the people in that need to get in so they continue to learn. Second set of rooms that we have are the offices. So we have uh, quite a few of these offices in around, um, around the building. Again, uh, meetings probably don't look the way that they looked in the past. Maybe uh, half the people at home, half are in our offices, and then half are actually in the room, uh, depending on who needs to be speaking and who needs to be listening. Next, we have breakout rooms. The breakout rooms are part of the, uh, the larger uh, courses that we have, where you do need that one-on-one -on -one or that peer-to-peer -peer, um, learning experience. So we have the smaller rooms that they can funnel into to uh, work on, smaller worksheets or things of that sort. Um, and we do have a bunch of those rooms. Uh, we've been able to fit 20 people in a room. What we may have to do moving forward is maybe we've got five in one room and five in another room. But with the Zoom technology, we're able to link the rooms so it feels like they're in the same room. Next, we have our larger classrooms. So our larger classrooms, we can fit about 150 people in there. But as you can see, those chairs are tight. So I'm not sure we're going to be able to get 150 people in here for some time. We'll probably start off 25, maybe 50, depending on how we can uh, move them in. But uh, that's definitely going to be um, a challenge. So now it's time for the results, where I tell you the effectiveness and uh, give you the graphs and show you um, how well it's going to work and what our forecast is and how much revenue we choose to make from it and, and all those things. But to be honest with you, I don't know, man. We're, not, we're still working on those. <laughs> we're still trying to figure out uh, how things are going to go, mostly because we don't know. We've never been in a pandemic before. We've never had a situation like this before. There's not a situation in the past where we had a pandemic over 100 years ago where there was technology around to support it. This is brand new. Maybe in the next pandemic, we'll have this one to look back on. But as of right now, this is a one-on-one. -on -one. So we're trying to figure it out. And uh, hopefully, we'll have great success. And I know with the faculty and the staff that we have here, as amazing as they are, We'll figure it out and we'll work through it. I would be remiss if I did not mention the people that helped me get this together. All of the Zoom rooms, people on the screen that you see have played some part in it and I'd like to say thank you to them. Uh, amazing work, amazing stuff. They're not all on my team. Uh, some of them are facilities, some of them work studies. Uh, but they all join together in order to make this possible. And I have to say thank you to them. Thank you. If you guys have any questions um, about this, please, uh, you can ask them now in the chat, and I'll check to see if there are any questions coming in. Um, if not, and you have questions later on, you can actually contact me by my email address. I have receipts. So if you'd like to know how much it costs to get a Zoom room together, uh, what kind of infrastructure we had to put into it, what cable was you needed, uh, how your uh, Wi-Fi needs to work, uh, um, all of those type of things, please uh, do not hesitate to uh, shoot me an email and uh, we can talk about it at that time. Um, I'll hold on for a second to see if any uh, chats come in. Okay, first question didn't come in. So uh, the question was, um, what do our participants feel about, how do they feel about Zoom? 
Um, we actually had a class, an MTA class last semester that was our first hybrid class. So as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, we had MPA, uh, some uh, that came in two formats. One which is online MPA and then the other one was in the building. So we had one class led by uh, Kim Nelson where we, it was a hybrid course where they were both in the same room. And uh, we actually had a student come and speak about it at one of the, uh, uh, one of the faculty meetings. And she, when she got it, she said the first day was a little wonky. The first day was a little tough. But after that, the second day, you know, it just was seamless. We got used to seeing the screen. They got used to seeing us. Uh, everyone's microphone was on, so it was very collaborative. People could speak back and forth. And uh, they actually said it was a great experience. So um, wasn't sure how that was going to work. But again, we had the test case that ran for almost an entire semester. And by the end, uh, all the students were uh, pleasantly surprised. Yes. So they did think it was uh, easy to use. Um, again, there are only 10 buttons on the whole interface. Uh, Zoom has done a wonderful job of making things simple. Actually, they made these a little too simple because there were some security issues in the beginning. But uh, again, they fixed all those um, because uh, Zoom does work with inside your network. Uh, unless you, are, you have a machine or a device that's on the network, it is impossible for you to share to it. Um, so, uh, uh, through the screen, unless uh, it is allowed through uh, participant sharing. So, uh, uh, Zoom bombing is, uh, uh, is, is always a possibility, but um, with the security changes that they've had, uh, uh, it's not much of an issue. We've been uh, streaming like crazy and <laughs> doing Zooms uh, here at the School of Government as well as on campus. and. If I'm not mistaken, there were five uh, that were reported this entire time, and they were all in the first week. Cool. Um, all right, I don't see any more um, questions, so I will go ahead and end the presentation. Uh, thank you, folks, for coming.